Hey world, how you doing? Uh, this video is going to be about a true T49F um, two-door freezer. Um, Merry Christmas 2017 to you, by the way. Uh, uh, you get to the freezer, it's 84 degrees inside. Notice condensers all choked up like this. Uh, front and back, pretty plugged up. Um, so that's what happens when you, uh, the best I could get out of it is 25 degrees. As you can see here, 24.8 degrees. Um, compressor valves are weak in the compressor, 10-year-old compressor. So T49F is just showing uh, what capillary tube is inside the two-door freezer. Um, this is just some part numbers I got from True. So I could get... Uh, new cap tube for it and uh, new suction pressure regulator this is showing the compressor model number uh, it's just some general pictures for me before I do a uh, replacement the uh, compressor shot weak valves so it just won't won't pull down below 25 degrees so that's what happens when you let these things uh, customers that's what happens when you don't clean your condensers, you know, front and back. It just, uh, compressor runs too hot for too long and the valves go out, you know, get burned out of it. So, um, you can create other problems too. So, anyhow, this is just some general pictures. Um, before this video, it's going to be about, uh, rebuilding this, uh, true T49F two door freezer. I'm um, going to be replacing the compressor, both condenser fan motors, uh, cleaning it all up, uh, replacing the suction pressure regulator because they leak after about 10 years. Um, so compressor, two condenser fan motors, suction pressure regulator, new liquid line dryer, um, new suction line uh, to the compressor, um, the coil in the back and also one evaporator fan motor and a three-way uh, defrost termination switch. So um, this is just some pictures of me documenting what parts I'm going to need. That's a 052S dryer. These are the 9-watt CW uh, condenser fan motors. So um, this is uh, just showing if you're using um, the bullet uh, cap tube, uh, which cap tube you could use. You could use the uh, BC4, I believe that's the 064 thousandths, uh, 64 thousandths of an inch. And um, this is just showing the uh, regulating valve. It's a zero to 60 pressure valve and the flow on the valve, which way you pipe it in. And just a, uh, this is the compressor, the new compressor. This is the new cap tube. For it um, and these are the new fan motors that are going in so and that's the new dryer that's going in so uh, here it here's the video okay job for today is put a new compressor and new condenser fan motors in this freezer the freezer here T49F uh, three quarter horse 115 volt uh, 22 ounces 404 so about a pound and a half 404 16 ounces is a pound so that's that Two compressor, two new condenser fan motors, uh, one new evap fan motor over there on the right side. Left one already got one a little while ago. And uh, that's it. New suction pressure regulator too. I 
do on uh, whenever you got refrigerators that are stuck up against the wall, you know, um, I always run a heavy cord. Run a heavy cord from the wall outlet in the back up the wall. So you got your, uh, you can disconnect the power down here on the floor. Uh, that's a little trick I do. So you can always unplug the unit without, uh, you don't want to, sometimes you don't want to roll these boxes when they're full of product. The, the wheels get messed up. Wheels don't like to move sometimes, so that way you don't have to roll the box out to unplug it. Little tip and trick. Tip of the day. Okay, recovery. First step. And that cage is all hooked up. So, oh, 150 pounds balance pressure we had uh, when I hooked up. Okay, so open the suction. And get the air out. Recovery. Open up the vapor. Mm. All right. Now we gotta plug this thing in. Alrighty, so what trick I do is on a unit, these units, I run a heavy cord underneath the units. Two pounds, four ounces, two pounds, four ounces after I recovered. So that's uh, a pound, uh, four ounces, four and a half ounces that I recovered. Alright, so got this thing cut loose, sanded the pipes for them cutting it loose. I think I'm gonna throw a new cap tube in here. Um, Fraser. This is past repairs. Uh, yeah. A new suction pressure regulator going in. <coughs> okay, uh, just cut loose and the electrical box is out of the way now so it can come out of here. Oh, we're ready to yank the condensing unit out. Okay, uh, it's 2.46 p.m. We got here at 1 p.m. So, hour and a half, uh, got the charge all recovered, and the thing all cut loose, and the electro all disconnected, and uh, coming out on the floor. There she is. And she's out. An hour and 40 something minutes. That's not bad for an old guy like me. All right, time to build her cleaner and build her out on the truck. Okay, let's see what this thing looks like in here. Uh, for putting a new cap tube in this thing.
Okay. It's on the back of the truck now. Oh, plugged up. All right, you cut the cover off. Oh, holy shit. Anyways, so you're in it. Couple nine watt CW. Uh, nine watt motors, 115 volt. Clockwise, CW means clockwise. There's the motor. T2180. Oh, nice place for the tag on the inside where you could never never read it but anyways 2007 unit this is 2017 December 2017 so um, 10 years okay little tip and trick one thing I always do is I always scratch uh, where these mounts go so when you go and clean this thing or take it all apart, sometimes they have multiple holes and you want to make sure you get it back in the same places where the factory had it, you know? As you can see on these motors, they're not in very far. And uh, kind of, I guess that's how the factory wants it engineered, but to me, I'd like scooping a little more air, you know? Uh, there's pretty good pitch on these blades though, so. But uh, as they wear out, though, they stick in further. But like these motors, anyways, 10 years old, they're getting replaced. New compressor, golden rule, not breaking it anymore. For any of you guys that have been watching my videos, uh, new fan, new motors. Okay. Okay, this cardboard cover is held on by like six of these kind of type of screws. And they go all the way across the bottom there. One, two, three, four, five of them. Five of these little babies. Oops. Holding on. First time I ever seen that many screws holding on the bottom of one of these shrouds. Usually they don't have squat. She's loose. She's a loose. Now she's going in the car wash. The cardboard's a little trashed. Okay, stripping the base down for the two-door freezer. Compressor's all out. Fan motor's out. Gonna replace fan motors. Gotta clean it up now. Gonna hose her down. <clears throat> okay, got the unit all cleaned up. It was hot water and chemical cleaned it. Clean it condenser. Pretty damn sweet. Okay. The only thing I wish I had a got was a new one of these things. I wonder if you guys know if the uh, anybody stocks these things. I wonder if RHS stocks these things. All right, let me know if you know. All right, thanks, bye. Okay, got all the new fan motors in, uh, 9 watt, clockwise, 115 volt, Moral motors, double foot, uh, cleaned everything up, as you can see, wire tied everything in, <coughs> um, you know, clean the coil, um, 
nuts instead of a tunerman nut got a regular nut on there with a locking ring on it and uh that's that gotta put the compressor in now okay and Bracco nt 2180 gkv 15 volt or 404 Nice the, comp nice the compressors come with the power pack. I was wondering about that one day. First time I had to get one of these compressors for uh, this freezer. Uh, 115 volt and T2180 GKV. It's a new number R404. Made in Slovakia. Very nice. Czechoslovakia. Uh, rebuild's coming along. Got the compressor in, electrical box comes with it. Pretty cool. Got a wire in the electrical low from the other one into here. Condenser fan motor's got to figure out how I'm going to do those clean. I think I'm going to put a terminal strip along here. Do them on there or something. <coughs> we'll see. I'm sorry about that, guys. Anyways, uh, got the fan with the wires all. Tidied up here. Uh, these holes, by the way, are come with Phillips in them, and they're a piece of chit. Um, like half of them wouldn't come out, and ended up stripping the head, and almost didn't get one of them out. So I replaced them. These are quarter twenty by half. Um, um, so they're they're a quarter twenty. Those Phillips, the true true uses those Phillips, those big Phillips. They're short half inch. Uh, and let me see, Here's the right. Uh, Hmm, here. This is what they look like. They use them on their evap fan motors, on like uh, prep tables and stuff like that. And they're a son of a bitch to get out sometimes. And you see them in, put in wrong by True. They're loose and stuff. Anyways, hey True, if you're watching this, uh, change your bolts. Change them to these, to these, to quarter 20 nuts. Bolts, quarter 20 bolts. And put a, put a lock washer between them. Do them. These are stainless, stainless bolts too, so. Went to the hardware store before I came down here this morning. So, uh, and uh, just stopped by the hardware store, picked me up uh, eight. I actually picked up sixteen, so I'd have have a few on the truck. So now I've got now I've got fresh E replacers, and so I'm good to go. Um, so pretty cool. Coming out sweet. Coming out nice. It's coming out nice. Okay, gotta do uh, NT compressor. Also right here, uh, they don't tell you which is your suction, your discharge, and your process. So uh, just so you guys know, uh, your suction is going to be your big one, obviously. Um, discharge is going to be the one in the middle. It's off. It's lower than your suction. And this process is at the same level you'll see as your suction. So that's a giveaway on this being your, and it's so small. Uh, so discharge is pretty small on that too. But this is your process over here and you can also look it up online it's kind of a bitch um, but i did confirm it online all right uh talk to you guys i gotta sweat this baby in now okay world uh okay so um this is it for tonight today um units all put back together got the discharge Coming out here, all welded up, fresh line, no couplings. Pulled it out of here and nitrogen purged everything. We got a liquid coming out. I got a liquid, I got a I got a EK052 SVV that's gonna go in uh dryer that's gonna go in. EK052 SVV uh Emerson dryer that's gonna go in somewhere. Probably, I'm thinking right about here or something, or uh, maybe back here. It's a pretty open space over here, so probably put the dryer over here. Um, that's kind of where it was before. It was like, it was like right here before, real close. 
I want to put it here so where it's a little, a little more accessible. The VV dryer has uh, service valves on it so you can put your high side liquid. You've got uh, pressure taps on both sides of the dryer so you can uh, check the pressure drop, pressure dryer and also pull a vacuum on it, whatever you want to do. You could put a high pressure safety on one of them, which would be cool, you know, so. Um, usually I put the high pressure of my hot gas access for my discharge line. I usually put it on here, but I'm not going to do that on this one. Um, these 404s that are close piped like this, man, this hot gas lines and they get these freezers get neglected. So it's hot gas lines run pretty hot and they, you got to put like the T in right here, which is so close to the compressor. It just gets, the T gets wasted. The uh, service valve kind of gets, uh, um, kind of gets leaky, I know. To, and after like five years, the uh, Schrader looked like it was kind of starting to leak or something. So I just opted not to do it this time. I'm gonna put, uh, I, oh, I wanted to show you, I got, uh, well, this is a cool little thing too. I wanted to show you, use a carabiner um, right here for lifting compressors, you know, and a rope. It gets, it's real easy, man. It, let you get on the thing if you need to pull it up through a hole or an attic or lift compressors out of the box man this is just this has been a lifesaver today it's just really cool and uh, i get these carabiners at uh, west marine uh the marine boats boat place or you can get the carabiners probably aluminum ones this is a stainless steel carabiner this thing's good for like two thousand pounds yeah uh 20 yeah this is a uh, it's a stainless steel 316 stainless uh, it's carabiners, man. I've had it in Italy, 316 stainless. Um, Max 20, there's a rating on this thing. It's made for sailing, so these things are all fully rated, you know. Max 20,000. Uh, uh, there's that kilonewtons, I think it is. Max 20,000 kilonewtons. Whatever the hell that is. I have to give my conversion chart. But I think this thing's rated for like 2,000 pounds. So, uh, anyways. Nevertheless, um, they're bitching. I've actually towed my truck with two of these. Tweaked the hell out of them, but... <laughs> um, but they worked. They're uh, pretty bitching. So I use them all the time for my ropes, for pulling up stuff. See on my ropes. Um, so I use them. I use them for holding my ropes for lifting and I use the ropes for you know uh, for dock lines for boats for pulling as my ropes because they're real soft on your hands real and they they handle the weather because they're meant to be out on boats so you know you know my truck I've had that same dock line there and, you know these ropes for like shit 10 you know going on 10 years or something or more and they're still like new you know so it's like these ropes last for like 20 years or probably more i don't know but uh it's called golden braid if you ever want this stuff it's really it's really easy on your hands um it's good. you can use it for anchor line for boats and everything so. anyways as you can tell i used to be a boater i've had a bunch of boats um all right uh, so this is where it's at right now um, so we got off the process, got the process going out here. I don't know if I should, I don't think I showed you this yet either. So I'm going to have this sitting out here for my suction and I'm going to put a, probably a liquid. I'm going to put a liquid out here for high side, uh, off of this, um, liquid line that I got here. So I got this thing all just, uh, nitro, I got it just full of nitrogen. So I don't want it. So I'm going to come back tomorrow finish this thing um, <coughs> but tricked it out stainless steel uh, quarter quarter 20 by half uh, half inch half inch long quarter quarter 20 with lock washers all stainless steel if you can see tricked it out pretty sweet they hold man stout they're slick way better awesome so you can get a wrench on them too now socket or something instead of the damn phillips i hate this freaking phillips um 
Anyway, so she's coming together. She's coming together. All right. Talk to you guys later. Yeah, that's gonna be cool. Service out. Right there. Them both right there. Sweetness. Hey world, how do you make this loop when you're trying to make these service loops for like freezers and you know reach ins when you got to pull these units out? A good way to make the loop is to measure across the loop and find one of your either a CO2 tank or a recovery bottle or nitrogen or whatever. So, um, this recovery bottle fits. This loop, pretty much right on the money. So, all you do is wrap it around the tank and start pulling. And you get her, get her wrapped around and uh, she didn't kink. So, just wanted to show you guys, that's how you do it. Just uh, wrap it around it and the uh, tank worked really good, man. And uh, that came out really well. All right, thanks for watching. Okay, world, a good way to tell if you uh, got a good system you're working on when you recover the charge, that you recover pretty much all of it. Uh, so this was a freezer with a 22 ounce charge. I weighed the bottle, this bottle, recovery bottle, uh, when I started at 21 pounds, when I got done in recovery, weighed 22 pounds 4 ounces, which that's 1 pound 4 ounces, which 1 pound is 16 ounces, 17, 18, 19, that's 20 ounces. Whole system charge is 22 ounces. Yeah, I, I'd say there's a, an ounce or two that, uh, you know, it's probably left in the system and the oil and stuff. So when you're that close, you should be pretty damn good. Um, or actually, I think I had a leak when I had I had an excess tea right here before, and it looked like it was just starting to leak a little bit. So, so I pretty much, I pretty much know you pretty much know you got a good system when you recover, you know, 90% of the charge out. Okay, thanks for watching. All right, bye. Hey world, how you doing? It's coming together some more. You got the suction line welded in over here. So, um, gonna put the suction pressure regulator. I gotta insulate the suction line now. Suction pressure regulator gonna be here. Uh, this when you're changing over from a the other compressor the suction line is here on this compressor the uh, this is the new compressor is the NT2180 GKV and this is the uh, T2180 GK this one so the old compressor suction is here um, so you have to reroute if you're gonna reuse the old suction pressure regulator you'd have to maybe see if you could get it you probably couldn't get it over here yeah so you'd have to do something else like I'm doing here all right hey world how you doing it's coming together some more got the suction line all done I believe insulated half inch suction line if anybody wants to know it takes exactly six feet uh, of well, more than six feet. This is a six foot stick of insel tubing. It's half inch ID by one inch wall. Got the big stuff on here because it's freezer low temp. You always want to go uh, as thick a wall as you can get. You want to do uh, a half inch wall for medium temperature refrigerator 
that's 35 to 40 degrees you want to do a, a half inch wall and a three quarter inch wall to one inch on a freezer depending on the temperature if you're below if you're below zero you want to go a one inch wall if you could so i believe this is one inch wall i got yeah i believe i don't know let me look here i think it is yeah one inch wall we go uh yeah, half inch id by one inch wall so um yeah so it's coming together we got the suction pressure regulator all in there sweats up real nice with 15 percent these are all uh solid copper stub outs you just wet rag it and the instructions say don't get the valve above 250 degrees and no higher pressure test than 300 with a suction pressure regulator in a system. I'll repeat that again. Do not pressure test these re pressure regulators over 300 PSI. They uh, won't like it. So, um, that's just what the book says here. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, yep, I have one of those guys that actually reads these papers for, you learn a lot of information with all the inserts. In, uh, inside so maximum pressure test 300 on the, this is zero to six t6 so 300 maximum rated pressure 400 so well yeah well if you want to follow the book that's what they're saying there for so, uh, take it as you will the CROT, uh, the six, uh, I believe, means half inch. Um, kind of like with dryers, you know. Um, anyways, uh, what am I thinking here? Uh, actually, that's not right. Okay. Uh, I'm tired, I guess. Okay. Uh, anyways, let's get, uh, all right. So, coming along. Just want to do a little bed. Okay. And that's it. Got to do a dryer. Okay. Okay, world, how you doing? Um, I think the freezer condensing unit here is finally done. I kind of tricked it out here. Um, check this out. Use the L bracket that was like longer, like the same way, like this. And I just cut the end of it off. And these screws are quarter twenty by half inch long and with a lock washer and they're stainless steel so they're stainless steel uh hex head you know machine screw so quarter 20 and that's what i used on the whole unit here all quarter 20 uh hex heads so this is uh they're all quarter 20 by half i'm glad i bought 16 because i used eight on the motors and then another one here nine and then i used another four here on the dryer doing the uh so uh eight nine and eleven twelve thir thirteen quarter twenty by half and lock washers all stainless steel and i got the hydros orbs on order uh gotta put those in them they come in tomorrow um the quarter inch hydros orb i just threw it that's a three eighths hydros orb i just threw it there to hold place but uh so this thing's pretty trick got this thing all sandwiched out um, new suction pressure regulator with pressure tap, new compressor, new condenser fan motors. That's three quarter horse, uh, a three quarter horse compressor for our 404 uh, for minus 10 for ice cream. Got the uh, 
half inch ID by one inch wall insulation on here. So, and I just have to, uh, once I leak check it all, I'll push the insulation around and put the insulation on the bottom there and stuff. So I get, at least when I can do this stuff from the back when it's in, this is all good in here so I can push it all under. So, and everything's all supported now. Not like the last one I did that uh, these guys weren't supported. So these are all pretty trick here now. So we're all in here. So I'm just gonna do electrical now. Stub that out so I got my pigtail to hook onto. So it should be pretty cool here. New nine watt CW 115s, condenser fan motors. Moro motors, everything's all welded, no flare nuts anywhere, none whatsoever, so, uh, so hopefully that should be it. All right, and I did a pressure test on the whole system last night, held over 150 pounds, 153 I put in it, came back and I had uh, 151, but I only put it in on the low side, so I figured it went through and kind of balanced off on the high side. I'll do a leak check and, you know, all that pressure test and everything on the final when I install it but right now i guess you gotta do the electrical all right so she's pretty pretty done they're all stubbed out i need to go under okay installation of the butt connectors to Connect up the old wire harness to the new condenser fan motors. Gonna be using these anchor heat shrink butt connectors. 14, 14. This is what they look like. Okay. So we're connecting here. Okay, so connectors are all done. They're all heat shrinked. Nice. So, uh, we will connect it up. It's all done. world uh, these are your quarter inch cushion clamps got these ones at Johnstone there's a number for quarter inch cushion clamps um, these are about three bucks uh, retail each uh, if you're a contractor you know what your pricing will be off of that so uh, anyways that's that I'm just gonna go in here secure this down Okay, she's finally done. Um, Two-door T49F, true. True T49F. Um, all new suction line, liquid line. Uh, everything's new here except for the co uh, condenser coil. Uh, everything's new. Um, Unistrut secured down uh, with stainless quarter 20 by Half inch long bolts, lock washers, uh, washers, fender washers. Same original size dryer, so the charge should be pretty darn close to the original charge. Uh, cushion clamps for the quarter inch for right here, so dryers rock solid, everything. Got clearance between here. Got clearance, clearance. Uh, so we got our, and we got our suction and discharge right there, all secured up, all nice and stout, wiring's all done here, ready to hook up to here, secure it down, new suction pressure regulator. 
new compressor and new condenser fan motors. So nice little rebuild. That's for sure. She's all hooked up. All right, time to put it in. Three hundred microns. She's down to forty-nine. Got to put a new fan motor in this baby. This one quit. <coughs> We're on a vacuum right now. And the motor gonna go in tomorrow. I want to quit for high. Vacuum pump going, and I'm gonna a little setup going here, on low and high. Set up, ready to rock it on. Hopefully, should be dry tomorrow. 297 microns tonight. She's ready to rock and roll already. Let her dehydrate overnight. Tomorrow, put a motor in it. Put a motor in there, uh, evap motor in tomorrow, and uh, put some gas in this thing and fire her off. And get her going. Microns overnight for like two days. They busted the wall here, so uh, I have to do a wall repair while I was here. I have to do. Uh, yeah, the drain pipe was broken, well, so I had to put it off for a day. <coughs> down to 175 microns. Um, I'll just wait in the charge. One pound six ounces, which is the 16, seven, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22 ounces. Or 404, right there. Um, so, better weight in. Weight it in the high side. Balance off for a bit. 
shit. Okay, replacing the Kinetz fan motor. Exact, excuse me, evaporator fan motor on the, this side. That one I did a while ago. Uh, the right side one. That's what I'm doing. Okay, changing one of these evaporator fan motors. Um, this one is a. They're six watt. You can see. But you can use a nine watt, and it works just fine. If you got a nine, I prefer a nine. Um, you gotta watch your bodies, the height of the bodies. So uh, that's what you gotta watch. And these Moro motors are usually not too out of hand. I checked the China one the other day, and man, it was like. It's like a freaking inch and a inch higher and it was a six watt and it was it was even taller than the nine so i'm finding that uh, out there too so you gotta watch your heights here so uh, but, uh, this one should work out pretty well yeah that's that's right on the money pretty pretty damn close pretty damn close to being right on the money in fact i think my nine might be a skid shorter, just, yeah, just a skid. So anyways, but they're both, uh, they're both 115 volt clockwise. So this is a nine, this is a six watt clockwise, six watt. Uh, 0.13 amps, 115 volt, 1550 clockwise. And so the one put in 9 watt which is what I stock on the truck and uh, I just prefer 9's I don't even use 6's anymore for 99% of the time I haven't used a 6 in ages the 9's just it's like putting a V8 it'll draw less amps it'll last for 20 years I don't know if I can see if you can see on here let's see if this will show up but it won't draw the 0.53 amps because the blade is going to be less pitch because it was on a 6 watt so 1550 CW gives you good motors she's the only motors I use I don't use any of the Chinas at all plus I can't get one on my, and I'm in a pitch but like I said I keep a 9 watt on the truck so uh, yeah, there it goes focused out good now I don't know what happened, but phone's getting old. Phone's two years old, I think, this year. It's 200 years in normal years. So, anyways, okay, gotta change that out. Alrighty, uh, must have if you're gonna do these things because they're way up in this hole. This is the must have deal extension. I keep this on my drill all the time. This is the tip of the day. Um, always keep one of these extensions in your drill, and then you just change the bits. And you can uh, do what you want with it, you know? And this is for getting up in the hole. And two of these screws, man, were freaking tight. I had to jack my hammer on the drill up to 13 uh, to get these screws out. These little quarter inches, they were stuck in there. So I couldn't even get them out with a hand screw, hand screwdriver. Uh, anyways, all right, so let's change this motor out. balance pressures after about 15 to 30 minutes before start up. Room temperature is about 70, so that's about right. Um, balanced off. You always want to wait after when you do a compressor job, wait for the pressures to both balance off on both sides. A minimum 15 minutes before you start it up, especially after weighing in a charge on the high side.
tricks that you want to know when you're taking out the old motor always scratch where the base you see and the and the unit I did a little scratch with a screwdriver you see scratch a little scratch to match it up so you know which way that uh, a break, that base is off, offset so it's the motor is not you know it's not round in the middle so the motors offset to the circle so so you do that and you also put I you either use scratch marks or a pen um, use a pen if you're not going to wash it um, and that tells you where the cord where the motor should go and the cord should stick out in relation to, relationship to the circle you know so those two are two little tricks for replacing these motors on these true freezers so that's that and the heat shrink and used uh, good connectors again uh, 16 16 to 14 gauge uh, waterproof butt connectors since this is a wet environment this is an evaporator so this is a moist environment uh, you want to use a uh, heat shrinkable connector to do a good job so. um, I don't believe the factory these connectors are water I don't these don't look to be watertight so I guess they get away with it but you could get corrosion between these things and that would be a That'd be, that'd suck, so. Anyways, uh, so that's that. I'm gonna replace this limit too. This thing's so gonna do that. defrost termination switch installed. Just gonna wire it in. Okay, got the defrost termination switch, three-way switch. Uh, wire it in. Heat shrink, heat shrink butt connectors. T49F true has a shitload of wires in here. Got all kinds of crap. Fan motors, temperature, temperature meter, fit uh, your analog display. That's your should be for there. For your, for your thermometer. Control wires going up through there. Wires here. Got a shit everywhere. Okay, uh, new evaporator fan motor uh, is replaced in here, and to get myself enough clearance. Um, the fan blades, they come out just a little bit too close and uh, that's why sometimes you might have to put a couple of washers and increase, uh, put a little bit longer uh, self tapper. So I use these 5 16 by 1s or 5 16 by, 5 16 by 3 quarters I think they are. Um, put a couple stainless steel uh, flat washers, uh, quarter inch fender washers between it 
um, give yourself a little more clearance more clearance clearance to uh, get the blade I don't know if see if I have a thing here one second I used to see if I can but yeah let's see. let me see if I can see where the blade is uh, yeah it's I get about a quarter inch or quarter inch three eighths or something now so I uh, just like a little more clearance so uh, they're just way too tight uh, way too close all right uh, so that's that it's all back together ready to start this thing up I think pressures 154 I weighed in the charge 22 ounces, so I'm just letting that run for a bit. Okay, got startup. I'm running just about a couple of minutes, two minutes. I'm pulling down on the low side. Obviously, it's cooling. Pulling down on the evap. There's no fans running. We got we got to cool the evap down first. So got a hot box. Freezer. Yeah, we got ice ice coming on the back of the coil a little bit. It's been running a couple of minutes. Get some light back there for you guys. See if I can do sideways video. Yeah, she's already frosted up and running just like two minutes. <coughs> Feeding sounds good. Sounds nice, and it's quiet. Running two minutes and we got frost on three quarters of the coil already. That sounds nice. Fans are off, of course. You got the door open. Yeah, fans off, so she's chilling down under no load. She sounds nice. suction line. charge comes out to be Shots, hopefully. Yeah, she's running, been running about five minutes. Chilling. Excuse me, Bill. Yep.
<coughs> so I'll throw some screen, screenshots up to see what I got going here, but it's the T49 Fraser. Five eighty five probe is the temperature of the inside of the freezer box. My other probe died. The wires got messed up right here. Something. It's all effed up right here. When I push on it, it works, but that's no good. So it's messed up. Something happened. left it on a unit for like a, a day or two. I left it, uh, I forgot about it. I left the probe on the unit. Just came back a couple days later. I guess that wasn't so good. I don't think you're supposed to leave them on a unit for a couple of days. That was just pretty cool though. I'm real happy with this. I like uh, why the damn phone's not focusing. The phone's getting old, I guess. suction tap on my suction line right here and if this probe worked you could just you know stick it right there and it'd be golden and here oh no I can do my liquid and liquid that's um, it's pretty pretty cool should have put a uh, liquid tea right here would have been pretty cool boom boom been set up, so we'll do on the next one. Got her going.
that sub only goes away, which it looks like you might hear. I just might have to add another ounce or two to keep some sub cooling, no matter what the weigh-in says on the tag or whatever on the unit. Got 50 degrees of superheat. I mean, this is a freezer, so that's not that's not terrible, but it's not great. So you gotta get a little more refrigerant in here to uh, get some sub, get a little more sub cooling, and get the superheat down a bit. System, as you can see right here, cap tube. Um, so we're charging by sub cooling here. Fresh or super heat, excuse me. So, uh, yeah, actually, both. I mean, yeah, they're both. So, like I said, you got to have some sub cooling or you got don't have any liquid. So, um, and this, this dialing. Thing in. I dropped in the 22 ounces from the factory and uh, not quite enough to uh, give me any sub cooling down at the bottom end. Uh, just adding probably another couple of few ounces. Probably there might be some different L line set or something or a little, a little something different. You know? I added a little bit of uh, light. You know, this is a Different compressor too, so compressor. same dryer and everything, so it should be pretty damn close within a few ounces. Get in there. Suction. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm more concerned with the uh, the actual suction line temperature and a suction line temperature of actually 30 degrees. So that's plenty cold for a freezer. That means you're going to have ice on it because you're below freezing. So. Just, um, that's where I'd like it. I don't really want that suction line any colder than that. So. Freezer. So. <coughs> don't need a little bit of sun cooling, so that's all I want to do is get about a degree of sun cooling.
been in our cap too because our, our sub going on us and our super heat.